questions and I believe that this topic was the one that God spotlighted in my heart for us to um, talk about during this women's conference and the scripture that was put on my heart was Psalm 139 verse 14 where David was saying I am fearfully and wonderfully made and he said marvelous are your works and he went on to say and that my soul knows very well and the question came up in my heart that do God's children God's daughters do they really know that they are fearfully and wonderfully made do they really know very well just like David was saying without a shadow of doubt that they have that God's work in them is marvelous that God created you for a purpose and that purpose is beautiful and that's what really inspired my heart so I want to mention four things that I believe beautiful is for us in this season the first thing I want to mention, as I mentioned these things, I'll also highlight an action point because really, if you hear the instruction of God and you don't take notes for what you will do next or how that's going to change your mind, then that word is not going to transform you. That word is not going to take you to the place where you ought to be. So as I'm sharing these things that I believe beautiful means, I'm hoping that you will take along with you what you know, what you're going to do uh, and just highlight these action steps. I know that as you do so, the Lord God um, will enable you to take those action steps. So the first thing I have here is that beautiful is your position. It's your position. It's your posture. It's where God has created you to be. Now, speaking about one's posture, the position, it's, it's a, it, I want you to consider it as a fixed place. It cannot be shifted. But we need to align with that position, that place that God has put us. Different things will contend with that position. Different things will contend with that place. And he's the one who called us beautiful. Remember when we were worshiping here, we called God the most beautiful one. How many of us believe that God is the most beautiful one? And in the beginning in Genesis, he said he created them, male and female, in his image and his likeness. So if God, the most beautiful one, created something that is like him, can we be called ugly? Can we be called anything less than what God is? No. So God himself was the one who created us, fashioned us. After his image and his likeness. And he calls us beautiful. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17 talks about the most high who is singing over us. My mind goes back to, you know, when I had my children and my mom would bathe them and take care of them. She would sing to them. Because she loved them. And she still loves them. And us too with our children, you give them nicknames. That's, what, that's an example of what it means for someone to sing over you. Because the person delights in you. Because the person knows that you're special and you're beautiful. So when the Bible says that God is singing over us in Zephaniah chapter 317, we better believe it. So that's your action step for that. That's your position. Your position that cannot be shifted is that you are beautiful. And so your action point is to believe it. And I know that sometimes I have experienced this in my life um, where there have been times where someone spoke something to me that was inconsistent, inconsistent with what God called me. And that shook my mindset a whole lot. The reason why we believe what other people say is, number one, maybe we feel like they are... Um, reputable people how many of us know about brand ambassadors right why do you think you need them for marketing and things like that because they have credibility they are people that you know people look up to so when they endorse something it's pretty much like giving it a pass mark so maybe on instagram or on tv or commercial you see someone holding a product and somehow, you keep thinking about it whenever you need to buy maybe insurance or buy whatever. Because someone who is a notable person, someone who you admire, has identified with that product. And so we take their word for it. When they say it's good, we take their word for it. 
And so that's why sometimes it hurts when someone you hold in high esteem. And that's, I mentioned this during the Instagram live one time. And then I said that parents, people in authority, need to be careful about the things they say because they'll hold great weight. So for me, it was when I was in college, there was a person who was so popular, and she just walked up to me in front of everybody. You could call that bullying. She said, I don't like her. I don't like you. I don't just know. I don't like you. And this was a person who was um, life of the party at college. You know, went, she, I think she actually even had a, like a business on campus. So everyone looked up to her. I was also, you know, you know, looking up to her to say, oh, this is such a person who was in college. You know, I don't know what she was on that day. I don't know what she was on to. But she just said in front of everybody, and nobody stood up for me. Nobody said, don't say that to her. That's not fair. I couldn't even stand up for myself because that could tell you how powerful her voice was. But that stuck with me. How many years ago after college, I still remember it. But it doesn't have any effect over me. There, there have been times that people that you respect quite a lot or you love if it was a mad person on the street that said something about me and says oh i don't like you i'll be like well good readers like <laughs> there must be something wrong with you right but if it's somebody who has authority that you respect that says something it cuts deep but when it cuts deep what will you find there? The core of it. Now, when we're talking about beautiful, it's mostly what you have on the inside. When it cuts deep, when it hurts, when someone says something, an authority figure, a spouse, sadly, some people have experienced some form of verbal abuse or the way you're treated, and it makes you interpret it that, okay, I'm ugly. Oh, I'm not worth it. I want you to remember your position. Your position is that you're beautiful, created by the beautiful one for beautiful things. Can you say that along with me? I am beautiful, created by the beautiful one to do beautiful things. Hallelujah. I have a beautiful life. That should be your stance. That should be your position, that you are beautiful. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's the first thing. The first thing I want to say about beautiful is that it is your position and then your action point is the, that you believe it despite what any, anybody else says. Amen. The second thing is that beautiful is a prophecy. So the first one is your position. The second thing is that it's a prophecy. And my mind went back to the story of the woman who didn't have a child in the Bible. She didn't have a child. She then later had, had a son and then the son died. And she took the, the son to the prophet. But when she was asked, is everything well? What did she say? It is well. When the Lord is singing over you and he's saying you are beautiful, your life may not look beautiful right now. But it's a prophecy. You've got to hold on to it. And you've got to say, just like that woman said, it is well. You're going to say, my life is beautiful. The Bible says in Romans 8.28 that all things work together for your good. Your mistake, your past, your background, what someone said, what someone did. God is beautiful in creating a craft, a beautiful masterpiece, using all those things as ingredients to create a beautiful picture. To create a beautiful life. All things work together for my good. Including the disappointments. Including the mistakes. The things I blamed myself from. If you can just present yourself to God. And believe in your heart. It's going to make it beautiful. So beautiful is a prophecy. And I want you to have that as hope in your heart. That it, it, you may point to things in your life right now. That doesn't seem like it's beautiful. Maybe a child, maybe health, maybe a certain position you're at. Maybe you're seeking, seeking um, God for a promotion or a lifting or stagnancy. You're seeking to get married. You're seeking to even have a child. Whatever it is that seems like it's ugly in your life. And when you hear beautiful, it's like, those people are kidding me. That's not true. How can you say that my life is beautiful? I want you to take it that it's a prophecy. And all that you're hoping for will come to pass in the name of Jesus. God said in Jer Jeremiah 29, 11, says, I know, God says, I know the thoughts that I have toward you. 
They are good. That's another word for beautiful. They are good and not evil, not ugly. To give you an expected end. That expected end of beauty. That expected end of beautiful. That will be your experience in the name of Jesus. So what your action point on this point is that when you, when you experience things in your life that it seems like it's not beautiful, you have to profess and pray. Just like that woman that had her son was dead. What did she say? She said, it is well. Someone says something about you. You say, no, my life is beautiful. It's not going to end like this. It's going to end in praise. Because why? God works all things together for my good. And I will get to that expected end. Amen? Hallelujah. The third thing here is that beautiful is also a process. Beautiful is a process. Similar to what I said earlier, God has a way of working things together for our good. Just today, as I was thinking about this, I remembered the story of Mandisa, who is a gospel artist, and she was, she was uh, trying out for singing, I think it was American Idols, and she came in contact with the judge, Simon Cowell. How many of us are, are familiar with that story? And he made a comment. He said good things about her, but eventually he made a comment that was pretty much telling her off because of her body, her weight. And I was reading... so. Fast forward to many years later, she took that and she ran with it. It made her feel depressed or, you know, sad about herself. But she took it and said, okay, how can I improve? She got better. She lost weight. And she said, I forgive him. And you know what? If he hadn't said that, that wouldn't have, you know, jolted me to become a healthier person, to lose off the weight. Yes, there was a struggle. How many of you struggle with eating healthy? (laughs) <laughs> it's real yes I was at a conference the other day and someone was saying that you know we may not be like um, David and Goliath right so David had a real giant that was Goliath right but your own giant might be just to say no to that puff puff or to say no like you can't say no you can't say no to fried, fried you can't say no to fries you can't say yes to broccoli you, you, just, you just don't like colors on your plate, right? That's a battle. If you don't know, that's a battle. <laughs> that's a giant you're dealing with. So Mandisa, she took that. It was a harsh criticism. But she went through the process. Sometimes God allows things to come into our way. But if we accept them, if you embrace it as a challenge, it's able to refine you and bring something beautiful, more beautiful, that you could ever imagine. Just like the one, when, the poem was, when the poem was going on, did you hear the part that talks about how something can come out of fire, gold coming out of fire? If you imagine that clay as the potter was roughing in the edges, if the clay was a human being, do you think that would have been a pleasant experience? Or the chiseling? Uh, maybe some part of it would have been therapeutic, like the massaging, right? But the chiseling and the cutting away, if that clay was a human being, it would have said, oh, that's, that seems too rough, that seems too hard. But at the end of the day, what comes out is beautiful. What comes out is beautiful. But will you embrace the process? That's your action point. Will you embrace the process? The Bible says, count it all joy. When you fall into diverse temptations, what could be something that will crush someone down? Someone else can take it and it will be a a turnaround to become better. So I want to challenge you. Just like Joseph said, remember that story? I don't know how many of us know the story of Joseph. His brother sold him to slavery. His life started off with a dream. He had a beautiful coat. Wow, I didn't even think of that. He, had, he started off beautiful. His father sold him a beautiful coat that even his brothers were jealous about it. Eventually, he got sold into slavery. He was put in a pit. He went to prison. Now, if he was in the pit, would you say his life is beautiful? When he was in the pit, would you say his life is beautiful? When he was in the prison, would you say his life is beautiful? When he got to the palace, what did you say? But, but he went through a process. 
he embraced the process. Remember, even in the prison, he was useful there. Even in the prison, he was made a leader. When he was in Potiphar's house, he was made a leader. He, he didn't allow the situation. He could have been sulking. He could have said, my brothers don't love me. Nobody loves me. He could have been in a place where he doubted God's word concerning him. God gave him a vision of beauty. God told him that he would be a leader and others would bow to him. But that was tested through the process. He could have been in depression. But I'm sure he had in his heart that my future is bright. I have a glorious future. What can I do in this time? In, even in the prison, just before he got to the palace, he met two people that were sad. <laughs> I mean, if you are in prison, why are you not expected to be sad? <laughs> Right? If you are in a place that you are in a limitation, are you not supposed to be sad? But he noticed that they were sad. Maybe they were happy a day before. Maybe that was not their usual countenance. But he noticed. He could have given an excuse. Yes, oh, maybe they are just remembering their future. They are remembering where they could be. They could have been remembering something. Maybe they are sad. And he could have ignored them. But he asked them, what's the matter? He was useful where he was. And he asked them, Little did he know that that was his ticket to the palace. So embrace the process. It may look ugly right now. It may look, oh, you are juggling a lot of things. Even as a young mom, it could look like, oh, you have toddlers around. And if someone comes to your house, you're like, this does not look like anything close to beautiful. But embrace the process. God is refining you. God is opening your eyes to things. God is changing you. And you need to be open to him to do his work in you. So the third point is that beautiful is a process. I'm also reminded about the butterfly. It starts off as a caterpillar. At the beginning, would you call a caterpillar beautiful? Maybe. But not as beautiful as the end product of a butterfly. But it has to go through a process. What about a flower? It starts off as a seed. Would you call a seed beautiful? Perhaps, maybe, the shape, but not as beautiful as the flower. But what the seed or what the caterpillar has to go through is through the beautiful process of dying, germinating, receiving all the nutrients, and becoming the beautiful picture at the end. What about a pregnant woman? Maybe at the beginning she looks beautiful, size six or two or zero. And then the belly starts coming. Ask her toward the end. I mean, we are believers, we have faith. God, God gives us, you know, the Hebrew without experience. <laughs> but there's a lot of, I don't know about other people, but my own experience is that, you know, there's a lot of trusting God, like God. Just one more day. Help me. If you ask her at that moment, is your life beautiful? What would she say? She's like, but what comes out? The baby. And, and you look at the baby and say, it's so cute, you're so cute. But the process, the process isn't that easy. So I want us to embrace it. Yes, it may seem like the, the process is rigorous. It may seem like it's hard. But receive that process. Receive that journey. Embrace it. Let it do the work in you. Let it bake you so that at the end, it will be beautiful. Amen? And then my last point here is that beautiful is a partnership. It's partnership. Partnership with God, also partnership with your sisters. It's only in God that you can know how beautiful you are. In scripture, you can see how beautiful he, he, you are. You can see what he calls you. Calls you righteous, calls you holy. Like the song we sang earlier. You're walking in power. You're walking in miracles. You live a life of favor. You're, the Lord makes his beauty, his glory to rest on you. That's who you are. But it's only in partnership with him. But I also want to emphasize on your partnership with your sister. Hallelujah. That's your action point. You need to cooperate, collaborate with your sister. We are not competing. You shine, I shine. 
We all shine. You are beautiful. I am beautiful. We're all beautiful. Can we say that together? You are beautiful. I am beautiful. We are all beautiful. You shine. I shine. We all shine. Hallelujah. That is wonderful. <laughs> You're flying, you're shining, your blossoming does not disturb my own. <laughs> How come it's the men that are echoing this? The, excuse me, this is our conference. <laughs> this is women's conference. So, yeah, you don't compete, you don't compare. I mean, you, I look at I, people, there are people I look up to, I learn from them. You can learn from them, but not wishing you were them. No, because they have their own struggles too. You celebrate their successes. And then you take on, you learn from them. We shine together. You know that women have stereotypes, right, that are not godly. <laughs> they will say women, we are what? Necessary evil. Or they will say that uh, we are whatever. I don't even know what, want to remember what it is. But can we change that? Or they will say women are not the best friends you can ever have. Ah, I can have a male body and everything will be fine. But once you have a female friend like this, everything is scattered. No. That's because there was a, a bad experience someone had. But we can change that by being my sister's keeper. How can we be better? How can I nudge you? How can you nudge me? The world is a much better place when we do it together. We don't criticize each other, like speak, like crush ourselves. We are only as strong as our weakest link. So you want to build your sister. You want to say, ah, we are not slowing down. We are not, you know. So that's your action point. Collaborate, cooperate. Let your life, or, you know, a week, a month, say, who can I bless? Who can I encourage this week? Who can I, whose life can I touch? Who can I collaborate with? Who can I help? Who can I encourage today? Hallelujah. So I just want to go over the, the different points that I mentioned about beautiful and what our action points are. Let me see if you are taking notes. The first one is what? What beautiful means what? Your position. And what is your action point for that? You believe. You believe that you are beautiful. The second point is what it's a prophecy and what should you do with that you pray and you prophesy it into being and the third one is that beautiful is a process what's your action point on that you embrace the process and then the last one is beautiful also means partnership partnership with god partnership with your sisters and what do you do with that you collaborate, you, you, you shine, <laughs> you shine, we shine, you, you shine, I shine, we all shine. Glory be to God. How many of you were blessed by that? Can we give God glory and praise?